and we had in our mind that we had that reflective exercise and we're going to spend some time in small groups looking forward. And we thought, what better transition person could we have than Nancy White, who has been there since the beginning and maybe there till the end. Who knows uh, how that will be, Nancy. So what I wanted to do really was to have this kind of bridging piece now to reflect on. We've had the chat show, a lot of interesting points came out. The chat itself, the online chat, a whole bunch of other ideas came up. And you know what I was struck by when we were preparing this, you, you shared this notion that, you know, if we would look to the future, it's all about critical uncertainties. Yes. And, you know, looking at the COP, the, the climate change conference, which starts today, I mean, the world is full of critical uncertainties. But we also have them in our own little online collaboration. So can you tell us a bit more about this? Well, what are we talking about here? What is this, what is this critical uncertainties business? Well, I, I think everybody would agree that we live in a world where we can't predict a lot, okay? So we have to become more literate about moving into the future versus predicting the future. Because predicting the future actually isn't gonna do us a lot of good because if we build everything based on a singular or a sort of integrated prediction, the chances are that it's gonna unfold that way are very small. I mean, the pandemic has really given weight to that sort of thinking. So I think people are ready to think differently than, okay, here's my Gantt chart. Here's my goal. Here's how I'm going to get there. Um, and think instead about here's where I think we're most probably going and I'm going to spend time investing and preparing for that. Or here are some things that might go differently that would cause me to invest and prepare in a different way. And then also, what do I do when everything goes to, as they say here in the US, hell in a handbasket? Everything goes wrong. I can't predict it. And so I, I really think that the um, things that y'all brought up in the chat are very reflective of a mindset that says, we don't know what's gonna happen and therefore we have to think about different things. And so one of the tools that we've been using in trying to do planning in a more complex world and you know, thinking about online collaboration is certainly part of that, is to think about what are the things that are critical to our success but are totally out of our control. And so, um, Pierre, if you want to show that slide, I, I put together a, a deck that will share the links with you. If you're interested, you can look at this more. We're not going to go into the methodology, but I just want to use it as a little bit of brain opening. Okay. So this is these are the two uncertainties I thought up in the future. And by the way, since you guys have been interacting, I thought up of a whole bunch more. Like what happens when, what if we if we people really unified in a kind of a more singular set of tools, or if they actually fragmented? That could be an uncertainty because I can't control what tools you're going to use. Well, maybe if I'm big, bad, and evil, I could control what tools you're using. Um, another one that you came up with was this idea of the information overload and information glut, which led me to the information terrorism. So one extreme might be that information is really getting clearer and sense-making is happening and we can vet information. And the other is it's infoterrorism. You know, we're manipulating with information versus generating good decisions with information. Um, the, the climate crisis is going to be a huge piece of what happens. Thank you. I just got brought coffee. <laughs> um, and so uh, if you think about plausible unfolding futures in this one, if you look, um, if the development sector remains or becomes more collaborative, public and private and held by those affected. So the decolonization piece that uh, I think uh, Saskia or uh, Louise mentioned, I can't remember which one. Uh, at the other end of the extreme, it's all about um, colonization and profit for the rich because colonization is still happening. It's not decolonizing. It's also uncolonizing. Um, and so and on the right, we, we connect connectivity becomes truly ubiquitous um, and affordable. And it is like a human right versus connectivity actually becomes more narrowly held in the hands of those with resources. So if I look in the upper right-hand quadrant and we have a collaborative um, user-driven development sector and there's connectivity, you can imagine this future that you might call like heaven on earth or like, finally, we got these dreams we had in the late 1990s, you know? Um, if we look on the upper left, it might be collaboratively, but, but the, the force that connects people is held by a few. So it begins to be a more complex way of looking, a more nuanced way of looking at. And as you look at these four sectors, you begin to think, what would I do in that context? And the exercise takes you through that whole imagining process. But the point is, is that you can't imagine a singular future. 
But when you try and imagine a wildly different future, you may actually come up with ideas that are relevant across all four of those quadrants. They're called robust strategies. Ah! Or you may come up with something that'll just work in one or two, or you may come up with some really wild idea that you can't even imagine, but may spark an innovation that you never thought of. So as we go into these breakout sessions, rather than espouse our pet ideal future, uh, you know, I, I hear this a lot in the AI world. It's like this kind of AI will be our solution, right? Um, and it could also be our worst enemy. So, so go into this, this exercise, really let yourself go, let your brain expand to places it might not have. And think about those things that you just brainstormed, particularly in the last uh, chat wave of, of what might be possible and try ideas on with those different hats. What if connectivity became like a super rich only thing? It's controlled and it's, it's used to manipulate politically, right? Or what if we truly decolonized our work? And frankly, most of us in the North no longer have any role to play and it's just fine. What would this collaboration look like? What would our role be compared to what it was before? So there's a lot of intriguing things to think about. So Peter, that's what I was thinking about and I probably talked yeah. too long. No, thanks Nancy. So, so this is like an approach I think that, uh, that, you, that this part of the whole liberating structures um, toolbox, I suppose, something like that. Is that what it is? Yes, it is. I'll, I'll put a link in the chat to the okay. slides. You can learn more about it. Yeah. So when we we, had, we we were thinking about how we could bring these ideas into a conversation today, but we don't really have enough time. But it may be that we should actually one of the coming out of this whole conversation to run a proper a whole exercise like this. And I wanted to just before we go into the groups, Nancy, what do you see in your crystal ball? I mean, what would you see as as the big changes that are coming. Help us as we go into our groups. I know, I know you said there's multiple strategies and multiple, what do you think is the most likely scenario, even from what's on the screen? I'm particularly negative and worried. I hate to, tell, I hate mm. to say this, but I think our polarization in a globalized world leads to such instability that it can both lead to innovation or crash. Um, and I think we can't put our heads under the blanket anymore that we have to start thinking about what if things crashed? How would we respond versus, oh, let's keep on building towards our ideal future. I'm not sure that strategy is working anymore. So I, I guess I'm saying, uh, be careful what you dream for and, and, and make sure you have some diversity in thought and then I think the other thing is, um, and this really is personal and, 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 and US based, which is um, examine your biases. And so I look to myself to realize how I have enabled racism in both my domestic and my international work unknowingly over so many years that um, the future has to start with a change inside of us. So collaboration is among human beings. So the changes inside of us have to be as important as the changes in technology and process. Okay, well, that's a, it's a kind of a very, it forces us to really think, you know, the, the, whole, the whole essence of this was working together, collaborating, but of course it is true that it's how, it's our own inner self has a major bearing on that. So thank you, thank you for that, Nancy. That set us all up, I hope. It's not Depressingly. Too <laughs> depressing at the end. I mean, we're gonna go now and think about, okay, what are the great things? Where are we gonna be going in the future? What does it mean for us? Um, but again, it's really good. But I really like the framework. And I saw uh, Louise putting a note about it. It'd be really nice to, to mural some of these things. So we could be looking um, to see if we could follow up already and take this all forward. But I think we're going to move now. So thanks. Anything else? Any more piece of advice, Nancy? I mean, is there a, more, is there a positive thing we can look forward to in terms of our, if you heard the stories we heard earlier, do you think in 20 more years time we'll still be telling stories like this? Looking back to the 2020s? I, I hope so. And I hope that we come together versus divide and find at least something in common. I've been saying for years as an online facilitator, if we get to know each other, there's less chance that we'll blow each other up. And mm -hmm. that is more true than ever before. And that is consistent from my early online facilitation work in the end of the 1990s to now is that, you know, either we're the enemy or we're the solution, but it's us. So that Pogo. Pogo used to say we have met the enemy and it is we 
or something like me, oh but uh, but also the solution. Yeah, so we're the enemy and the solution. Okay, with those words, we're going to form some groups. And I think, thank you very much, Nancy. That was just a kind of a nice transitional piece. We were, you were the bridge from the past to hopefully into the future. 